Thank you very much. Uh, good evening to everyone. Good morning to me. It's early here in Canada, in British Columbia. So the title of my talk is Digital Machining Processes. And let me first introduce you my lab. And so I started at UBC in 1986 with $8,000 startup funding with this old non-operational machine. Now the laboratory is uh, uh, probably largest in North America in, in my field. We have about 25 people working in the lab, several PhD students, uh, six engineers, postdoctoral fellows, and so on. Uh, our funding is about one and a half million dollar a year. And we publish over 200 journal publications with a book. And uh, our technology uh, was packaged in a spin off company. Now it's used by more than 300 companies worldwide. So these are some of the machines we have now in the laboratory. It's well equipped. Uh, we have almost $6 million worth of equipment now in the lab. And uh, I will show some of these equipment in the research later. So if I start digital machining processes, in traditional manufacturing, the engineers take the CAD model, bring it to the CAM system, and they design machining strategy and generate NC toolpath and load it on the machine here, machine the part. If the part is not satisfactory from production point of view, tolerance violation and so on, they go back and try something else. My vision has been, can we model the physics of machining, machine tool behavior, in computer environment to minimize or eliminate this trial and error altogether. This is what we have been doing last 35 years in my laboratory. If I start the technological components of uh, this research, the first part is CAT CAM. The second part is physics of machining, where we predict force, torque, power, vibrations, and so on. We produced the first commercial product called CutPro back in 2000 from the university. And it's now used pretty much by most of the aerospace companies and machine tool builders worldwide. The third part is the machine tool itself, which has its own kinematic configuration, computer controller, and so on. We develop our own CNC, therefore we turn our real CNC into digital CNC. By integrating all these three, we could mimic real machine tool, which is called now virtual machining system. And we released the latest uh, industry product called MacPro back in 2011. So research still continues naturally to perfect these modules. If I walk you through now, step by step in this technology, the first is the machine in physics. Imagine that uh, this is one cutting edge only in a typical machining operation. If we can model the physics of this process, namely the force, temperature, stress, strain, and so on, we can map these forces to different operations such as turning, boring, milling, and drilling, and so on, through climatic transformations. This was our philosophy. Instead of modeling each process one by one, we develop one highly general mathematical model which can be adapted to any machine operation. For example, this is taper helical pollen mill used in five axis machining of aircraft engine compressors in powders. The material is titanium, which is very difficult to cut. Uh, this slide is almost 25 years old. You can see predicted and measured forces are in good agreement. And this is another example. This is an indexable cutter, machining aluminum. Again, simulation and experimental results are in good agreement. I'm showing these two slides to show that generalized mathematical model is able to predict any machining operation. 
Here is another uh, complicated config machining operation. We have a terminating operation here. As you see, we have double spindle and the part is mounted on one spindle while the tool is another spindle. And we are able to predict this as well. Uh, <clears throat> one of the uh, biggest problem in uh, machining is vibrations. Imagine that this is a diagram of a machine tool. If the machine rotates at low speed, speed range, such as under 1000 revolution per minute, typically the large components of the machine tool vibrates. If the speed increases, then the vibrations are dominated by the spindle shaft. And as the tool rotates, it impacts the workpiece, causing transient vibrations, leaving these vibration marks behind. When the second tooth comes and impacts again, a, a transient vibrations are excited again. As a result, now we have not a constant chip thickness, but oscillating chip thickness. The force applied on the machine is proportional to this chip thickness. Since chip thickness is oscillating, now we have oscillating cutting force as well, which becomes a closed loop dynamic system. When the system becomes unstable, vibrations grow exponentially until something is broken on the machine or part is destroyed. This is highly costly operation, especially in the aerospace industry, because aircraft parts are extremely expensive. They can range from $5,000 up to a million dollar a piece, and you don't want to scrap them. We develop a stability theory almost 25 years ago, uh, which predicted ideal cutting conditions which do not lead to chatter instability. This is called stability charts. The vertical axis is how deep you can cut with the machine. Horizontal uh, axis represents spindle speed. P product of these two mainly represent, represent uh, productivity of the machine. So higher speed, higher depth of cut is more productive. As you see at low speeds, very uh, unproductive, and also the machine would not work, would break everything. So based on this theory, the most ideal situation is, let's say 14,000 revolution per minute, and you can cut up to about uh, four to seven millimeter depth of cut. While at the low speed, only one millimeter depth of cut. So the productivity gains incredibly high, provided that you find these pockets of stability. If you operate at 12,000 RPM at the same depth of cut, you would destroy the machine and the part. And before we discovered this theory, uh, these delayed differential equations were solved using numerical solutions, which would take a day to plot just graph. With the frequency domain analytical uh, solution we developed, uh, it takes 0.1 second or less. Uh, how did we uh, deploy this technology to industry? Uh, it is shown by this slide. We put uh, traditionally traditional accelerometer and impact force sensor. We measure frequency response function of the structure at the tooltip, which is here. We model this automatically using our model analysis software and using our cut pro machine simulator, we predict the stability charts. Now the engineer can uh, select the best and most productive point, let's say here, and they can simulate force, torque, power, and surface quality, whether it's acceptable or not. If it's acceptable, they can program it on the machine and get on with the production. And this is how it is used in industry. And one example here, this is a motorcycle machine with a two fluted end mill. When we operate the machine at 15,400 revolution 
per minute, you can see we have almost plus minus 400 Newton force. The machine shatters at 2,800 hertz and the surface finish is terrible. So this is not acceptable. But if we enter into the pocket, the forces are reduced by almost four times. Yet we are more productive at the same time and surface finish is good. Vibrations are gone. And here, machine is suffering uh, at this frequency. But when we reach the green zone here, machine is okay. And more for that. Um, let me show you one video. This is a scroll with 150 micron wall thickness and 35 millimeter height. The challenge was to cut this thin wall part in the first trial without scrapping it. And we did by using this type of approach. And uh, the industry brings us more challenging problems. For example, this was orbital drilling of aircraft windows using portable robots mounted on the panel of the aircraft body. And this was a master thesis in my lab. And you can see we digitally modeled the process and provided stable cutting conditions for the manufacturer. Another problem came to us from oil industry, oil and gas industry. It's a typical uh, pipe factory. And uh, this is the pipe. These pipes are used in uh, piping oil from deep ocean. And the pipes are connected to each other using these threads. Because pipe is so flexible, if it vibrates, then you would have non-uniform threads. When you connect them, you can see, uh, because of this poor thread connection, the pipe cracks from these threaded joints, and you have an oil spill. So we solved this problem and delivered them a, a digital machining process system, and the students now professor. Another example is blade machining. These turbine blades have tin walls, as you see here, very flexible. And they are made of titanium and nickel alloys, very difficult to cut. This project is digital machining of blades. As you remove metal from the blade surface, the dynamics of the blade varies along the toolpath, which has to be modeled. If you use finite element systems at each point, it will computation it will take hours to analyze a simple blade. Therefore, we develop so-called subtraction techniques to solve FRF, frequency response function, without solving the eigenvalue problem. So in this uh, project, first we have to predict the forces applied on the blade structure here. Then we have to predict frequency response function of varying dynamics along the toolpath, like this, analytically. We have to model the contact mechanics between the cutting edge and finished surface, which may be wavy because of the vibrations. Then we develop stability model of the system so we can predict at which speed and depth of cut the blade should be machined. And along the toolpath, we must detect at which location we will have a problem such as vibrations. Then we also must predict the amount of deflection errors imprinted on the blade here to see whether the blade is machined within the tolerance set by the designer. So we develop this whole digital machining system so the engineer can try make different machining strategies before 
uh, trying them on a real machine. Another digital machine project is Spindle, machine design. Here, one aerospace company came to us and they said, we buy so many spindles with 30,000 revolution per minute, yet uh, the spindles smoke, that means destroyed in every two, three days. Why? And we knew the problem, which was instability in vibrations. We develop a mathematical model of the spindle for the designer. These are the bearings. So it can be developed very fast. Then we predict the frequency response function of the spindle, tool holder and tool assembly at the tool tip. You can see this, uh, the black one is the simulation, red one is the real measurement. Once we are able to predict the dynamic behavior of the spindle accurately, then we can cut digitally with this digital spindle before manufacturing the spindle. This way, the designer can modify the spindle uh, dimensions and the bearing locations to make sure that the spindle operates, for example, at 30,000 revolution per minute. Uh, furthermore, uh, we cut with the spindle. We let it shatter, as you see, the forces are exponentially increasing. We measure the forces and we also measure the vibrations close to the bearings in these three locations. And we also predicted vibrations digitally to see whether we are able to predict the numbers as correctly as possible. As you can see, they are not bad. Vibrations are about uh, my, plus minus four micron, and we are able to predict them reasonably well. This way, we demonstrate that the digital model of the spindle can be used instead of real experiments in the shop, which are very expensive. The same philosophy is applied on machine design. This is a typical machine tool, which consists of uh, different components, which are here. We model each component one by one, mathematically store them in the library. We develop some mathematical techniques to assemble them to create the machine. This way, machine can be simulated digitally before physical manufacturing. For example, here, this is the simulation. <clears throat> machine has a natural frequency at 33 hertz. And we realize that this is because of the wrong mounting of the motor here, spindle motor. It is swinging left and right causing vibrations at the tool tip. Therefore, productivity of the machine is very limited by this wrong design. As you see, if the machine moves in the, <clears throat> excuse me, X direction, it can cut only two millimeter. But if it moves at 60 degree in X, Y plane, it can cut 25 millimeter. The ideal machine must have a symmetric performance. So uh, we gave this technique to uh, a partner in Taiwan, for example. They integrated our model into topology optimization to optimize the design of the machine. And they improved the productivity by 30%. Uh, similarly, this is a large 5X machine center with many different components. We use the same technique, either finite element, or experimental model analysis to develop a, the digital model of the machine. So we can test the machine digitally in different poses. We develop our own research CNC, which can control any 5-axis serial machine. The engineer can select the geometric parameters and climatic configuration of the machine, and the CNC becomes ready in five, 10 minutes. Uh, then when we connect the software to the real uh, digital signal processing board and the machine, it becomes a real physical CNC. We integrate all of these models into geometric simulators such as Vericut to see 
the effect of vibrations, controller, and so on, on the machine, uh, on, the, on the machine part. Now, I will talk about uh, uh, some of the uh, instruments that we designed and built ourselves in the laboratory. Please give me uh, a minute here yeah? and listen to music. As you see, this is a nine axis machine. This is a magnetically levitated table with six degrees of freedom. The table lifts off the air, can rotate, move in every direction, and rotate around each axis like a space shuttle. This is a press machine with a six degree of freedom table, a three plus six. Now we have a nine axis machine. table is jumping up and down, rotating around each axis. Okay, uh, this is uh, Beethoven's Fifth symphony, but uh, we are not playing music in the background. The machine has such a high frequency bandwidth, the student connected his iPhone where Beethoven was playing, his iPhone earphone outlet to the amplifier of the machine. So table here is acting as a speaker. So it's not a background <laughs> music at all. So we developed this machine uh, which has sub-micron accuracy. And we developed the CNC as well. And you can see the machine can read the card. The more micro We develop other uh, mechatronics devices as well. This is uh, ultrasonic uh, vibration assisted tool holder. The tool holder here vibrates at about 17 kilohertz with seven eight micron amplitude, vibration amplitude. These are used in machining composites in aircraft industry. And without using any sensor, we also develop control law to control the tooltip position again with sub-micron accuracy, as you see here. Now the radius here is about eight micron, and this is elliptical motion without using any position feedback. We use sensorless feedback here. This is another uh, project. Uh, this is a typical master project in the lab. Uh, this is a large boring bar. This project was done in partnership with Sandri Karabat Company from Sweden. Uh, traditional standard boring bars have fixed configuration, but when you mount this boring bar on the machine, the dynamics change. Therefore, we designed this adaptive mechanism to tune the frequency of this boring bar automatically and adaptively right on the machine. This is impulse, magnetic impulse exciter to apply impact force to the boring bar automatically as a computer. And we mounted power, uh, the AC, this DC servo motor to the power screw here. So we can compress these O-rings with micron one or two micron displacements to adjust its natural frequency. This way, we can adapt the boring bar to the machine. And as a result, you can see the real part of the fixed pulse function of the machine was dropped from 15 micron to 0 0.24. Okay. 
okay, almost 60 times increase in productivity. And the vibrations are all eliminated. And <clears throat> these digital models are also, the machine uh, digital models are incorporated into a software, which I mentioned at the beginning of the talk, which is called MacPro. And we integrated this technology into Siemens NX and called it MPro. Here, the engineer, as soon as the engineer generates the toolpad, the engineer can see the process as well, force, torque, power, vibrations, so they can take corrective action before machining the part physically. We also integrated this uh, technology to CATIA 3DS, the same idea. Some results from industry, this is from Sandvik Karamant company, this is aircraft part, before our optimization and after optimization, some blades, IBRs, as you can see, the productivity gains could be anywhere from 20% to 60-70% by deploying digital machine technology. At the moment, we are using, we are developing digital machine tooling. We already have software modules which can simulate the machine and the process. Now the present challenge is, if we put sensors on the machine tool, we can also measure the real values as opposed to simulations. Simulation knows what would happen on the machine ahead of the time. Not with 100% accuracy, but with 80% accuracy. Machine measures things, but only after it happens. It may be too late sometimes. So we develop communication link between digital twin and the real machine to help each other out. Machine measures sensor values and calibrates simulations automatically. Simulation tells the machine, you have a sudden change in the cutting situation here, therefore don't be, don't mistake it as a tool failure and something like that. So, and also we are collecting this data to train expert systems, which are running in the background as we collect the data. This is what we are doing at the moment. For example, this is a five axis machine. The force is acting on the table, but this force is traveling through table, nut, screw, coupling, and motor shaft all the way to the armature of the motor. The idea is, can we predict this force by measuring the motor current without using any expensive impractical sensor? Because of this force transmission all the way to the kinematic chain, the force is distorted by the dynamics of the machine. And this is the fixed response function of the machine, as you see, after 20 hertz, uh, output is not equal to input anymore, it's distorted. At 40 hertz, the mistake is almost 900%. And we get incorrect force measurements by monitoring the current. We develop Kalman filter to compensate this disturbance. Then <clears throat> you see this red dots, now output is equal to input. Um, prediction accuracy is good. This can be used in <coughs> sensorless, excuse me, <coughs> sensorless machining of, for example, impellers, as you can see, and IBRs. Now this is on a production machine. We also started project in hybrid physics, artificial intelligence based monitoring system. This is the, below we have physics-based mathematical model of the process, above we have machine learning network. The, we have knowledge about these things accumulated over 1000 years. And we can, we don't have to treat the process as a black box. On the other hand, there are uncertainties in the physics-based system, especially on the parameters. So 
by running both of them in parallel, we can improve the prediction accuracy. For example, here, chatter detection was increased from like 60% success rate to about 97% success rate by combining the two. So all of these are also integrated into uh, industry-friendly software in our lab, which is sponsored by a number of companies. And we de deliver this software to them so they can use it in their uh, development and production. These are the, some of the companies which use our technology, and they're also uh, our research partners. Naturally, I did not do all of these myself. Uh, I have a strong number of uh, very talented graduate students and continue to have them. Uh, we work like a family together. They are the ones who develop this know-how. Thank you very much. That's all.